David Webb. Truth is the authority. This is Sirius XM Patriot. So how do presidents act? How should they act? How have they acted in times of crisis? Founder and president of the Reagan Legacy Foundation and son of President Reagan, Michael Reagan, joins me now. Their website, ReaganLegacyFoundation.org. Uh, Michael, boy, here we are once again, a worldwide crisis. You know, I remember something you told me and reminded me of many years ago, that when your father was asked about uh, what uh, the strategy was when it came to the Soviet Union, four words, we win, they lose. Here we are. That was it. Pretty clear. That was pretty simple. <laughs> it was really, really pretty simple. You didn't have to really, gosh, can we decipher this? What did he really mean by that? What have you? And, um, you know, you, you had people literally back then, people like the president of the United States now, uh, Joe Biden was just absolutely, you know, couldn't believe that a president would, would say that or a president would call Russia an evil empire or he would walk away from Reykjavik and, and what have you. Uh, I mean, this president would have signed a document at Reykjavik, never would have called Russia an evil empire, uh, have, and never would have said, we win, they lose. It's just completely opposite of what happened back, you know, in the, in the 1980s. And so I sit back, and I'm not dumbfounded by it, because I've really seen it before, and my dad and I had conversations about this, you know, way back, way back in the day, even prior to when he was uh, president of the United States. Yeah, Joe Biden, and I want you to tell this story. We, it's been a while. You have told it before, but Joe Biden and your father on decisions that President Reagan would make. Because, I, you know, in order to understand Joe Biden, you really just have to look at the last f almost 50 years. But there are moments that really stand out in, in what Joe Biden said to your father about disagreements and what he would do. Well, you know, he was one of those, they call him the gang of eight. He's the people you sit down with when you're making decisions and, and so on and so forth. Then you kind of get their input. And uh, Joe Biden was just very upfront with my dad back in the 80s and would tell my father that if indeed my father was planning any covert operation that he disagreed with. Even if everybody else in the room agreed with the president of the United States, uh, if he disagreed, he would leak it to the media uh, to stop it. I mean, and, and then you wonder, geez, we went into Grenada. We didn't tell anybody. We did a flyby at Tripoli. We didn't tell anybody. You start to understand why, indeed, the president of the United States played it very close to the vest because he had a guy in the room who would have leaked it to the media uh, had he not agreed with it, and he probably wouldn't have agreed with it, you know, at all. And and that's that's really kind of Joe Biden. Uh, that's that's who he is. He never would have won the Cold War uh, because he wouldn't have wanted to make that kind of a that kind of a step. And we're kind of seeing that now with what's playing out, you know, in, in Afghanistan. Uh, he had to be called to the table. I mean, you know, you got to get here. Uh, you kind of come to the White House, and I remember my father back in the 1980s, and I write about it with uh, a flight 847 TWA, which was hijacked back in the 1980s, I think 1985, and you know, flying to Athens and all over and what have you. And there was a, a group of a young Navy personnel on the flight, and uh, they actually shot one of those Navy personnel and threw him on the tarmac. But my father, because it happened the middle of June to the end of June of that year, uh, my father was planning to go to the uh, to the ranch with Nancy. Nancy's birthday is July 6th. And so they were going to go to the ranch, as they would do, and celebrate Nancy's birthday at the ranch and take a couple of weeks or take a week off and go there and have a private birthday party for her at the ranch and, and so on and so forth. But because of what was going on with Flight 847, he thought it be, would be better, even though he could do everything from the, from the ranch, because the White House kind of travels with you, he thought it would be better if he stayed at the White House and monitored what was going on instead of going on vacation, basically, and monitoring while they're having a birthday party for Nancy. And so he stayed back at the White House, monitored 
all that was going on and didn't go back out to the ranch until August, during the August recess that year. And we celebrated Nancy's birthday from that point on every August in uh, at the ranch, not on her birthday, July 6th, but in August. That's what a president does. Uh, this president, however, you know, was at Camp David. Yeah, Camp David's got all the things, all the things that he has at the White House, but it's perception, and perception's reality to the public. It goes beyond perception, though, Michael. It, it, there are phones at Camp David, at least I've heard they haven't removed all the phones. And Boris Johnson couldn't get a hold of the President of the United States, which is an immediate pickup for anyone who's been in the Oval Office, unless you're avoiding it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just, it's just, there's certain people you, you take their call immediately. And there's certain people you call immediately is what you do. Uh, uh, and this president did none of it. And what was really embarrassing, not embarrassing, but just whatever, is coming to the White House, giving a 20-minute speech or 19-minute speech on Monday, going back to Marine One and flying back to Camp David to continue the vacation. Like, uh, nothing happened. And, and, and just to be honest with your audience, I had trouble when you had Trump or you had Obama on the golf course when big things are going on, I, I just looked at those things. God, my father would never be on a golf course while things were happening internationally that he could monitor from the White House because he really understood perception. And maybe that's because of his upbringing, the fact he was an actor and really understood perception. Uh, many uh, people in politics should go to school on that and learn from that, but they don't. Yeah. Well, what they learn in school is a lot of things they take into their office, and we don't want that there either. Uh, by the way, I, Michael's articles will be up on my Twitter and Cloud Hub and other social media at David Webb Show, uh, his latest piece in Kegel. Uh, I want to go to another piece that you have out there uh, to weigh Michael Reagan's the left is dumbing down children of color. <laughs> and I know it's you, but I just want to put that all in the headline uh, because I started today, Michael, talking about how the world sees us. You know, what does the world see that we don't acknowledge about leadership in so many ways in America, cultural, political, parental, ideological, religious leadership? And here you have this piece, and, and I got to tell you, it's starkly stark it's just real the left is dumbing down children of color explain this a little further and and there's no and there's no outrage <laughs> there's no outrage i mean at what point does america get angry and mad i get 75 percent of the kids of, of color here in california you know inner city you can't read write their own names <laughs> nobody's upset nobody's angry nobody's mad then you've got the and then you have what's going on in Washington. Well, let's just take reading and writing and arithmetic, you know, out of the system. So you don't have to worry about passing any of those things to graduate from school. And that's what we're doing. And nobody's angry. Nobody's mad. You're going, when do you get upset? When do you get upset? When you sit there and say, okay, well, you're not doing well in that class, so let's get rid of it. I mean, that's what you do. You don't try and make it better. You don't try to educate these kids better but what you do you say listen okay black kids brown kids kids of all kinds of different persuasions uh you're not have to worry about your reading your writing your arithmetic anymore because we're not going to make that part of your your sats or your your graduation i mean it just it it that's what's mind-boggling to me david that nobody's mad Nobody's angry. Everybody's going, oh, well, that's great. Jeez, my kids can be able to graduate from school. And you know what? The, the only thing they're going to be able to use when they graduate, from, you don't give them a diploma. You give them a Glock 17. That's what you give them. Give them a Glock 17. Because they're not going to be able to do anything else except rob banks, go into grocery stores, steal things from grocery stores. Oh, that's right. They can do that now, too, up to $1,000. I mean, what we're doing to America is, is sinful. I pray for the coming of Christ tomorrow. Tomorrow. He's late. 
I've got to tell you, my friend, if, if we didn't have leaders like your father, you, you've been out there on the public stage uh, trying to keep people aware and educated for many years in and out of media, uh, we would be in an even tougher fight today. We are in one hell of a fight internally and externally, but always appreciate it, Michael. And remember, let me remind everybody, the walkway to victory as well. Uh, go to ReaganLegacyFoundation.org. All the information is hey, there. But we, just, we have a we walkway to up. victory because of your father. That's right. And we just we just laid another 190 bricks in. They just went in this week. So we're we're good. That's great. Yeah, walkwaytovictory.com. Thank you. All right, my friend. Take it easy. I'll talk to you soon. You I always take your Bye -bye. call. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> Boris. <laughs> there you go. Michael Reagan, again, uh, <laughs> the Reagan Legacy Foundation, president, founder and president of the Reagan Legacy Foundation. I do always take his call. Ask my wife. And he takes my call, too. So it's kind of how it works.